Hiya guys, welcome along. Hope you're all well. Thanks for tuning in and uh, good to see you back. Um, a bit of a different one today. Today is the 12th of March 2020 and in the UK, well certainly here in, in, in my neck of the woods, we've got awful changeable horrible weather that stops you doing anything, um, anything outside anyway. It's uh, one minute it's pouring now and the next minute it's blazing sunshine, blowing a gale. It's just this weather is just absolutely getting me down and I'm sure that anyone else in the UK is, is feeling the same and most people I hope you're getting all um if you've been affected by floods and stuff I hope you're getting everything sorted so um I'm lucky I haven't had any damage or any floods or anything well, I've got my shed roof the, the felt got ripped off my shed roof so everything in there is soaking wet but that's nothing compared to what some people have endured um so one of those days just sat in looking on the computer looking around at stuff and sort of looking at moustache really um, and I came across a kit that I own which you obviously know what it is it's in the title but I came across a kit that I own and um, I've got four of these Tamiya RC tanks and I was just looking I thought I'll have a quick look on um, on YouTube to see if any build videos of it or anything you know and there isn't really much at all there's loads of action videos of the uh, the Tamiya Pershing but there's no real inbox reviews or bills or anything so I thought well I'll throw half an hour away and I'll put together a video and do an inbox review of it it's a kit I've had for absolutely years I bought it second hand off a guy in London on eBay and I paid like 400 pounds for it back in about 2015 I'm guessing I remember when it was first released it was my first time at Telford and there was a Tamiya guy there who had it on the stand I think it was released around about the same time as the FAMO tank tank transport um, and I remember chatting to him about uh, about it and uh, and it was from him that I learned the technique of for your leather seats paint them do whatever you're gonna do shade them and then to give them a sort of final sheen it's quite disgusting but if you if you rub your finger on the side of your nose the skin there is generally quite early just rub it across the seats and it gives it that sort of um, that sort of leathery sheen it's as I say it's quite disgusting but it works so if it works do it um so anyway the kit here it is it's massive it's heavy you can see it's even got a handle on the top so you can carry it around like a suitcase and as you can see down here where are we down here you can see it's faded where it's been in the sun so whether it came from a shop window or something I don't know but um just to give you an idea of what this kit is like we'll have a look in the box in a minute but I can see on the back here and it's got it on the front here as well what it actually does so it's a 16th scale radio controlled tank four channel operation with DMD control unit and it's the M26 Pershing T26 E3 so it's got full operation control forward reverse regular turning pivot turning turret rotation recoil action and raising lowering of 90 millimeter gun <sighs> pre-assembled gearbox realistic suspension system rubber covered wheels Pre-assembled tracks, realistic commander figure included. The MD T06 enables this monster machine to run with full action. Main and machine gun muzzle flash, headlights and brake lights light up. Real sounds reproduced and controlled by MF03. Sound effects, engine starting sound, engine idling sound, engine running sound, engine stopping sound, turret rotation sound, raising lowering sound of 90mm gun, main and machine gun fire sounds and clanking sound of tracks. Wow, <laughs> quite a kit. But the trouble is, the biggest downside with these things is price. I think this one currently retails at about £750, which is cheap. When you compare it to the Sheridan, which is like £1,100, or the Leopard, which I think is £1,300. So yeah, and, and the, M1, the M1 Abrams is up there as well. So you can get these cheaper, you know, if, if you uh, go to Asia and stuff on eBay. But um, it's a lot of money to lay out, it's a lot of risk if it gets damaged in the post or whatever, and it's going to be a hell of a customs charge too. So without further ado, no, before we uh, do a further ado, what I'll do is just show you this. These boxes, as I say, you've got a handle here so you can carry it like a suitcase, and I mean it is, it weighs a ton. Um, and you can actually open the box like this, open the front up. I can hide behind here. Hello. And you can see, I need to look at what the camera can see, you can see that in there we've got, this is the electronics of the kit and then over on the other side we've got some metal parts and everything. And in the, in the middle there you've got the built up tank and then all around there's pictures of all the things it can do. So if you're familiar with these RC tanks you'll know all about it already. 
but if you are through these RC tanks and you've never seen this kit inside I think you might like this video because as far as I can see there isn't an unboxing video of this kit on YouTube so if I'm wrong tell me in the comments below so let's get to the bench and see what we got in this box right so we've got it on the bench now and I'll tell you now I'm sorry if you've got any glossing or anything I think this is the hardest camera set I've ever had to do. The box is kind of the wrong shape. It's like four to three instead of sixteen nine, um, uh, and also it's it's glossy. So uh, yeah, I'll do my best. So basically, in the box here, we can see we've got these two pieces of Velcro that hold this this lid down. So this is where it just opens up beautifully like that. Um, so here you can see the actions it will actually do. You've got the forward, reverse and turn around and go left and right and everything obviously. And then we've got the gun going up and down. And we've got the turret swivelling. Um, we've got the sound effects. Um, here it's showing you've got a movable travel lock is positioned on the rear hull. So you can actually put the gun into the gun lock if you want to. Uh, large size body overflows with realistic detail. Jerry cans, ammunition and ration cases are loaded as accessories. Um, We've got an aluminium gun barrel, which is nice, or aluminium. It's al it actually says aluminium, not aluminium. So, uh, yeah, aluminium. Apparently, aluminium is the correct terminology, the correct way to say that word. So, over here, we've got the DMD multifunction unit MF03, and these things are, are just amazing. <laughs> um, you plug them in, and they, they do all the multifunctions, the lights and the sound and everything. They're little computers among themselves. I did see uh, Andy's Hobby Andy's Hobby Headquarters review of the Sheridan. It looks like this has all come on a bit now with a with an LED display and everything, or L C D display on it, should I say. And then in the middle here we've got the, the model built up and you can see we've got a commander figure there and we've got our stowage and everything here. But it's all looking fresh and brand new and unweathered, which is uh, a little unreal. Even the exhaust is clean. So um yeah, I remember this when I say, well, say when I saw it at Telford, it looked absolutely stunning, and it was the model. If you go back to the Tamiya model magazines, they actually built one of these in the um, in that magazine many many years ago. So I'll slide the box down now so you can see what's on the top section. Here we've got our tracks made up, and over here we've got our metal sprockets and uh, gearbox covers and everything, and typical Tamiya fashion, all beautifully packaged, you know, undamaged. This is shipped halfway across the world, and I've had it here for years and. It's been shipped from London to me and everything. It's, it's just incredible the way they ship things, the way they pack things. So we can see here we've got the um, machine gun, the, the main gun lighting up when you fire it. You've got the machine gun lighting up. You've got your brake light on the back and you've got your headlight on the front. Um, and they're showing here the uh, M2 machine gun and the commander figure. And then one firing muzzle flashes, speaker roars, a recoil gearbox retracts gun barrel, then slowly returns it to its standard position. In addition to this action, the hull itself recoils by running gearbox movement. Machine gun is also linked with sound and flash. Headlights and brake light can be turned on via controls. One downside with this, unless it's all come on a bit now, but one of the downsides to these, um, as it fires, the whole hull jumps back. So if the gun's at 90 degrees, like here, like it's shown here, firing sideways, the hole still jumps back. And I think if you turn the gun around and face it the other way, the hole still jumps back. So that's kind of a bit gimmicky, but you know, it's there. Um, and it's all very, very nice. And you can see here this, the, the tracks with the, you know, the beautifully working suspension as all these radio control tanks are. I've actually got the Leopard, which I stopped because I actually bought it off the same guy. Um, and the, the Leopard had the, fiber optics missing so I bought some fiber optic cable and found that was too hard and I've since been trying to find some soft fiber optic cable for the leopard so if you know of any let me know I just need clear fiber optic cable because it has a central light unit and the fiber optic cable that I bought because the kit the, the, the guy that had the kit had lost the instructions decor stickers and everything gave me a massive refund and I went and sourced everything everywhere else but the fiber optics I got are very very hard and they won't conform into the shape I need so if anyone knows where I can get some soft fiber optics I can get that one finished um, but yeah I've got this one I've got the leopard I've got the tiger and I've got the Sherman the, the tiger the Sherman and this one unstarted still in the box so they'd be fun little projects so um Tracks are all made up, as I say, which is a shame because I like doing the tracks. And also the gearboxes in here are all made up, which is a shame because I like doing gearboxes. So um, without further ado, let's have a look at the instructions and then we'll crack this box open and, and see what's in here. Right, so here we go. I've got the uh, instruction manual out. And looking here, I can't believe it, 2002. Was it really that long ago? 18 years ago. Wow. So um, 
Yeah, we'll bear that in mind when we're looking through this. An 18 year old kit. We all know what early 2000s plastic injection molded kits can be like from some manufacturers, don't we? So um, straight into the manual. It's telling us what sort of radio gear we need. And of course, this is going to be the old um, FM because um, the 2.4 gig wasn't around then. But these days you get the 2.4 gig. And then it's suggesting what batteries we need and what tools we need. Uh, soldering iron and um, synthetic rubber cement. Whatever that is, I don't know. Um, Tamiya, Tamiya cement or extra thin these days. Tweezers, drill, screwdrivers, pliers. Just basic sort of tools really. And um, these are a real joy to build. I've, I've done a couple of these in the past. I, I bought them and built them purely to sell them. And um, yeah, they're very enjoyable to build. So we've got a little correction sheet here telling us that we've got uh, in step 40 on page 28. So we'll put that in when we get there. Um, here we're talking about the paints. They're talking about the surface primers, their metal primers, um, aerosols, enamel paints and acrylic paints. So you can take your pick. They give you some hints and tips about what to do and what not to do. You know, this is basically, this isn't for children. This is not a toy. Um, and you've got to be careful with children picking up parts and swallowing them and stuff. Um, they're telling you to read the manual thoroughly. You know, follow the instructions thoroughly. Don't just go willy nilly cutting stuff. And when it comes to painting, make sure you're in a well ventilated area. And um, what's this here? Keep average of small children. I'm not trying to show exactly sure what they're trying to say there, but um, don't didn't stand there with a screwdriver in your hand and wave it in front of your dad. I think that's what they're saying there. So God knows. Um, bit of history here on the M26. This is all in Japanese. And then when you turn it over, you get it all in English. Okay, so you've got all the larger images here, and then when you turn over, you've got the same thing with smaller images there. And um, a couple of real time photos there, probably from Korea. Not sure where that is, but there's a there's a T thirty four there. So um, yeah, the N twenty six came right at the end of the war, didn't it? And it did actually take out a Tiger, I believe. So um. Yeah, for your history, you can have a read here um, or uh, or look up elsewhere on the Internet. There's a lot of history about this tank, about it was um, it was pretty successful as far as I know, and then used a lot in in Korea. So it's sort of talking about setting up the um, radio gear here. So you need to make sure you set your radio gear up before you start, I think is what they're saying. And then we're straight into the into the build. So we've got a plastic hull and then we're going to add metal parts to it. And we've got our little towing towing area there, we're adding on the rear panel here, or just adding some pieces into the rear panel, and then adding all our suspension. These are the shock absorber units, or the bump stops, are they? And then this is all screwed in. You can see metal brackets in here being screwed in. Lots and lots of metal and screws and everything, which is where these things come in handy because you've got your premium. This is a premium hobbies glue holder, but I was thinking if you had this ABC, you could put all your screws from bag A, B, and C in there. So um, I think they'd be really handy. And again, if you're looking at my um, if you're looking at my build of the uh, Land Rover I'm doing over on my other channel, Nigel's Land Rover channel, you'll see I explain about all these 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 images here are life size, and you can see here this MB2 is shaded in. That means it'll be a black screw rather than these two, which are just uh, plated. And then over here we're going into the uh, removing the the sprue gates from the tires. And then we're going to clean up the outside of the tires, add the tires to the wheels after we've painted them, of course. And then we've got more metal bushings here and everything. You can actually get aftermarket bearing kits for this. I have got one here. Here it is. This is the uh, bearing kit from RC Bearings. You get them on eBay. And um, this is basically 42 of the 850 bearings. So you need 28 for this stage. And they're basically proper roller bearings or, or bearing races, should I say, rather than having these... Um, these metal bushings in here, they'll last much, much longer. And also if you get grit and grime with these bushes and the bush spins on the shaft, that will just wear the shaft away. So it's best to get these aftermarket bearings if you're going to be using the model at all. Um, going on here, they're telling us to apply thread lock to the, to the threads here so they don't come undone. And this is basically all metal parts here. None of your leopard plastic suspension parts. And you've got the same here. This is all metal, which is really, really nice. Um, so it's going to be extremely strong and durable. Um, and then it's telling us to assemble all the wheels and everything onto the uh, onto the chassis there. And then we're going to add our suspension. Then we're going to put in our suspension springs. 
and it's telling us how to sort of turn them and push them in at the same time and get them to work. So you're going to get working suspension and here's all your different springs here and you can see for identification purposes they've shaded in two of them and left, left the other two bright. Um, and here it's giving you the actual adjustments for your, for your idler there so you can actually put the idler in, it looks like it's got a hexagonal um, fitting on it so you can turn it around and just put the little body clip through there which is nice. Something I've noticed, there's no sprue call outs with this which is a bit strange. Um, then we've got our return rollers here and we've got basically a large metal shaft going through and then we've got some tiny little metal bushings there. I'm surprised you don't buy bearings for that but uh, whatever. And then we've got the plastic part there which is going to glue onto the hull. Something to be aware of if this is anything like the Leopard, the hull on the Leopard is ABS so your ordinary extra thin won't work. I found that this extra thin quick setting is quite hot and works quite well but the other glue that works really well in ABS is this one EMA plastic weld so that works very well as well but you do need to get a very wet joint and make it work um, it's no good just like you're building a scale model you put a tiny drop on get it wet make it work and get the glue to do some action um, as I found out with my leopard you could just tap things and it would fall off and what I found was you get it very wet and squeeze it together you get the proper weld action going there um, and then we're adding in these back plates here that support the idlers so that's all good and then we've got this detail going in the back we've got our exhaust detail there and uh, that's going to glue on and we've got some some more detail here for smaller parts then we've got a metal tray that the actual gearbox and motor units are going to sit into so we're going to screw them down in here and then we're going to add the metal tray into the chassis and then add that blanking plate onto the bottom and we've got screws and washers going in here to hold that metal tray in. So although you have got a plastic tub, it's got all these metal stiffeners in the bottom for the suspension. It's got the metal stiffeners on the side for the idlers. And it's actually got a complete metal frame that's basically a metal chassis within the plastic body. And what they've done here, if you look at the Sherman and the Tiger, they've kind of got these folded steel or folded aluminium hulls, which aren't strictly accurate. Um, whereas if you look at this one, because of the shape of the hull, They've, they've given you more accuracy with the model, which is a nice touch. Um, and then here we're just adding more and more bits and pieces to get this, this frame actually, you know, solid in that chassis. This is going to be a very rigid thing when you've finished. And then we've got these bearings in here, going in here. I don't know, again, why I haven't got the, um, why I haven't got the bearings in the kit. So that's an 850 and that's a 1280. I don't know why there isn't a couple of 1280 bearings in that kit. So we'll have to look into that. Yeah, very strange. I'll have to look into that. Um, but I'll have to just get some of those. Then we're going to add our tracks and our metal sprockets. Again, we need to paint these. Again, don't use any really good metal primers on here, especially on the ends of the sprockets, because as the, as the paint wears off, it will expose the metal underneath. And although it's not strictly the correct colour, it will look quite realistic. So... What I tell you to do now is just add the sprockets on here and then go and charge your battery up. There's a cup of tea there. Have a break. It will take about four hours to charge the battery. So you've got to connect up all your RC kit now. Um, are we going to connect up a servo? I can't see a servo on here. Um, I tell you not to, not to connect the six volt receiver pack. Normally they have a servo to operate the, um, the gun recoil, but uh, I can't see that here. Maybe it's just not being used yet. So, um, yeah, setting up your radio gear here. You can read down there exactly what you need to do. And then we're going to, this is going to be setting it up to make the lights flash and everything and trimming it. So all very, very highly detailed. If you want to have a read of that, I will bring it closer to the camera so you can have a look and freeze it. And you can see just how uh, technical these things get. But they are good fun. So um, adding in the speaker unit there, they're always quite big. The bigger box gives you the, the base um, other than just, you know, because it is only a tinny little cheap speaker that's in there. Um, but the box gives you the, the actual proper sound effects. So they do actually sound quite realistic. So here we're telling you to solder everything. And you've got the antenna going in. Well, obviously, um, you're not going to have 
the antenna with this with 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 the 2.4 2.4 gig like you do with the fm you don't get a great big long antenna you just get a tiny little short thing and you could just leave it inside the tank or you could have it coming up into the turret or something if you wanted to so now we're going to get into some detail parts so i'm going to add our machine gun and then put the fiber optics inside it and we've got an led on the inside there um this looks like heat reflective no, this is grills this is mesh grills sorry going in the back and there should be a template to cut them because we've got the mesh grills here but i can't see okay this is your template for your mesh grills here so that's those two there and then you've got the mesh material here with the uh, decal pack so there's the mesh going in there and then we've got some wires and it's telling us to route them and stick them down and everything and then where the switch is going to go the switch is going to go in here somewhere and then we're going to build up our upper hole parts and this is detail parts now so we've got some light units here um this is going to be your clamp for anti-aircraft machine gun and then we've got the antenna base uh, we've got the driver's hatch the assistant driver's hatch we've got the headlight right and the headlight left and then we're adding some detailed parts here to cover up the sides these areas in the hull and adding the uh, engine covers on there so you've got the mesh underneath and then the engine cover on top which is a nice touch adding on all the, the um, supports for the for the track fenders toolboxes going on the sides here's your um, your 90 millimeter gun travel lock um, intercom cable so it's um, telling you to use this looks like a spring material and then that's going to go on where's the where's the intercom cable going no here okay so that's going to come off the bottom of the um, the telephone box on the back of the tank and then go into a hole in the back there turret ring going on with the uh, gearbox to turn the turret and then assembling the turret up together not sure about the cast seam there check your references i'm not sure if it would have a seam there or not and then you've got the this is the option of the um the uh, firing system so if you're not using that you don't need to worry about that then we've got the this is the mantlet going together now with uh, screws and balls and all sorts and you've got this ball socket here this is going to be for the um for the gun recoil and the gun raising and then we've got the muzzle going on the end of there we've got the led up inside the gun barrel you can see here or the flash unit should i say um and i think there's a warning on these you've got to be very very careful because they they produce extremely high voltage i think um and then you've got to fix the body of the flash unit using double-sided tape as shown um attaching the turret ring and then letting the wires all come out the bottom there i still haven't seen a servo being used which is quite a shock and going forward here we're going to assemble the machine gun which in itself is a model is a beautiful little model itself and then we've got the um the spare track links going together little basket on the side of the turret there another hatch some more health and safety stuff fitting the turret connecting it into the um connecting it into the rest of the tank and then it's showing you here where it should be all connected and then you put the figure painting instructions for the figure and put the figure in the in the turret and then you've got your accessories to make up so we've got some ration boxes uh which are here they're plastic parts i thought they might have been card and then we've got our ammo boxes here jerry cans um water water canister um some more ammunition cases there so it's all very very nice and then back over the page this is for the attaching the battle system if you're going to use that and they actually have a live battle, live battle system so you can go and play with your opponents and shoot them and everything so there we go that was a quick look through the instructions let's get this correction in the right place on page 28 it said get that in there so that's that and then here we've got our um, decals which, are, which as you can see are quite massive you've got the stars i'm not going to open it because it's still sealed we've got our stickers here identifying our um connections on our on our radio control equipment and then we've got the, as i say the templates for the mesh and then we've got under here is some this looks like heat retec heat reflective tape which you're going to be using to reflect light or heat or both so there we go that's that let's have a look at some parts right guys just to give you a nice an idea of the size of this kit 
the camera is in the same position as it was just now a couple of seconds ago where you saw the instructions and this is where the camera is sits when I do my build videos so as you can see this thing is a complete and utter monster I mean there's the hole there top of the hole and I, I can't get it out because it's jammed underneath all this wonderful packaging but you can see it's it's um it's big there's, there's my hand so you can see the turret is, is like bigger than your fist okay so big old model if you want to see this built and some details added and stuff there's a guy called oddball 569 or something um, he does a lot of RC tank stuff on his channel brilliant brilliant channel really good enjoyable watch go and have a look on there he also tells you a couple of upgrades for this as well there's a couple of little detail pieces missing which are easy to add so um as I say as I showed you first of all we've got metal parts over here we've got all this lovely lovely packaging we've got a lot of plastic parts under there I can see and then over here we've got the tracks all the electronics and then we've got press metal parts box it says down here which I can't show you because I can't get the camera to move there you go so we've got press metal parts box so as you can see wonderfully packaged so I think the best thing to do is move this out of the way as you can see there's the camera where it normally is I'll just move it back because I moved it to show you that box so we'll get the camera set up like we normally are and what I'll do is I will show you these parts box by box so we'll start press metal parts box I've never looked in here and even though I've had this kit for years so press metal bar pressed metal parts box and the first thing that comes out is a little wiring <laughs> and our thread locks so we've got liquid thread lock this is probably dried up by now so here we've got the um, antenna that we don't need to use and then we've got some uh, wire there, a spring, some electrical connectors which we're not going to need and then we've got a little bag here which is going to be our suspension springs as I say if you remember some of them were coloured and some weren't wiring connectors this is um, obviously some sort of special connector in the middle there and then we've got all our wiring there which is set up beautifully and all the coiled up and everything another wiring connector some more cables this is going to be our firing unit and if you remember I said on here yeah high voltage do not touch CN7 until three minutes after neon light has turned off so um, I'm not sure how high the voltage is it can't be that bad they were allowed to sell it but uh, and then we've got a, a converter here which is going to go from one to two batteries so um, if you want to use two batteries I'm guessing I don't know or is that the other way around Then we've got some uh, metal brackets and stuff here for the hull and little, these are little hinge plates or something they're all beautifully pressed we've got some more another bracket there with some um, these are the suspension I seem to remember these were part of the idler to stop the actual um, to stop the actual spindle turning and, and make the uh, the idler the, the turn the, the wheel turn rather than the spindle little LED there it's probably the machine gun one of the colour of it ball bearings that'll be for the um for the race that the, the turret actually turns on a ball bearing track more springs here more road springs and a little blue bag of we can see there we've got our machine gun if i can get the camera to focus machine gun cooling jacket actual machine gun barrel you can see there it's beautifully turned and it's already blacked for you you can see there really really nice I'm not going to open any of these bags obviously because I don't want to lose anything so I'll turn the camera off now get this back in a box and then we'll get another box to look at okay I've just checked in the instructions and this isn't for two batteries or anything this is actually so you can run one battery and then one one connector goes into the MFO3 and the other one goes into the DMD one is the control unit one is the same right control this is unit. the um, DMD control unit you can see here which is basically controlling your um, you basically it's controlling everything on, on the model all the, all the movements and everything and this is the MFO3 which is the multi-function unit and this is this is going to generate all your sounds and everything so um you know re really really working together that I don't know if you've seen these before or heard them go have a look on some other YouTube videos they're actually quite incredible um, very expensive but very very clever uh, and also here we've got the tracks which I've just had to cut the tape on and you can see here these tracks are beautifully detailed 
they've got metal pins, metal ends on them. They're going to be extremely strong, extremely reliable. Do they have metal track horns? I think they do. Let's have a look. They look metal to me. They certainly don't flex, so they're either a very hard ABS plastic or they're metal, but the actual pins themselves, and you can see the end connectors there, are actually metal. So they're really, really nice. Here's an interesting box, quite heavy, beautifully made, beautifully packaged. These are our gearboxes. And if you're not, not familiar with these tanks, you'll know how complicated these are. I wish they give you these in kit form so that you could build them. Um, but there's no instructions, so you have to be careful taking them apart. But um, they, they all need to be greased and everything. But you've basically got two motors there. I think they're 380 motors, aren't they? Um, so you've got obviously got individual or independent uh, track controls. So you can actually have one track station and turn the other or have both. So you can sort of go around a corner or you can do a central pivot by having the tracks turning in opposite directions. But uh, there you go. There's all your gears and everything in there. You can see they're very complex, but they're they're geared down for scale. Um, they will go quite fast, but they're also able, capable of, of running at scale speed. So they're really, really lovely. And um, as I said, I wish they'd give you in kit form so that you could build them. I've put those in the wrong way around, haven't I? Because it would be nice to uh, to build them. Me being an engineer and stuff, I'd love all that. So that can go back in the box. And then underneath all this, I found another bag of, of paperwork. So let's have a look in here and see what we've got. So this is our, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we have no parts call out. We do. Here it is. So there we go, that's our parts call out. As you can see, there's lots of it. Lots and lots and lots of bits. There we go. And then here we've got a colour call out and our decal placement guide. So oh, we've got some photos of the real thing as well. So there we go, that's our colour call out. Sorry about the gloss guys um, and we've got 1950 inch on and then this is 1945 Germany which is probably the one that everybody would would go for and then you've got an image there of the built model looking lovely um, telling you how the instructions are on how to do dry brushing they're telling you about drilling holes in stuff here and then there's some photographs there of the real thing going across the bottom for your reference is all very nice very nice indeed and then the back is just plain glossy white paper and then this is a this looks like a sort of they've tried to print it with a, with a world war ii look to it. it looks very much like the jeep stuff i've got um so basically this is the operation manual on how to use and play with your pershing so and normally with stuff like this you get the first two pages in English and or Chinese and then the next two pages in English and then you've got Spanish and French and German but it looks like this whole thing is English and Chinese so yeah lots and lots of information there lots to take in troubleshooting which is always a good thing and um because it's got flashing lights and stuff and, and when you see these lights flashing you want what's going on so you can refer to that manual to help you okay got a great big box here now which literally weighs a tide it feels like it's about one and a half two kilos um, and this is called the metal parts box so if we just pop the end off here and then we can get inside and pull out what's in there if it wants to come out and it doesn't there we go oh lots and lots of stuff lots and lots of individual boxes and parts everywhere so here we've got the <laughs> that's what I was waiting for so here we've got the um, these are all your metal parts and you can see you've got gears in here got your gearbox covers sprockets on the bottom um, and again we've got more gearbox covers here this is the, the front of the gearbox covers that's the backs and then you've got your uh, your actual sprockets there so these gears are actually going to go inside the actual gearboxes so there's another bit of realism for you as you can see they're beautifully cast very hard wearing very tough they do last a very long time um, and there's 
some metal bracketry in there. So this is going to be all your stiffeners for the sides of that plastic tub. And then you've got your suspension spring mounts here. So they'll go back in there. I can put them away after, can't I? Here's your speaker box, which is very cleverly moulded and beautifully made to um, fit within the tank. And that, that speaker in there actually looks a lot better quality than I've seen before. So, um, yeah, should have quite a good sound with this one. That looks better quality than I've seen on other Tamiya models. And then here, this is why we didn't get those bearings in the RC bearings kit, because they're already bearings. Those larger 1260 bearings. So, um, that's why. So we've already got bearings in the kit, so you don't need to get them. There's a box of bits there, I'll have a look in a minute. Bag of screws. Some spanners, normal box spanners, a great big box spanner there. Um, some double-sided tape, ceramic grease, some ordinary grease. And then here we've got a couple of screwdrivers. This is your screwdriver for trimming everything. We've got some cable ties in there as well. It's very nice. This is your bag of um, 50 bushes. As I say, replace those with bearings. This is the gearbox for swiveling the turret. This is small iron key in there, which is part of it. Yes, yeah, taped on there. And then you've got part B. More bushes. Part D. Part A. As I said, this is what these, you know, you can see that using one of these glue holders, you can put those parts in there, put your B parts in there, put your C parts in there, and then, I don't know, get another one for your D parts, or put your D parts in another pot or something. But, um, Really handy for that, I think. Um, this looks like it's going to be the gearbox for the recoil, probably. Or is that one? They're either gearboxes. So what's this one then? So there's three gearboxes there. One is going to be for the turret. One is going to be for the recoil. And one is going to be... I'm not sure what for. Anyway... Then we've got some metal parts, some axles and everything in here, which is nice. Brass and steel plated parts. And then we've got some steel plated spacers or whatever in there. Some bolts, big old bolts there for, for odds and ends. And I've got a box here, which is very heavy. Not quite sure what's going to be in here. Have a look. These are all your suspension arms, you can see all die cast metal, whereas the, like the leopard was plastic and they break. These aren't going to break, they're all die cast. Same here, die cast arms for your idler and everything. And then here in another bag, more suspension arms. So they've obviously colour coded them for a reason. So they can all go back in that box. So that's the metal parts box looked at and what I'm going to know I'm going to have a quick look so I can come back and say what these gearboxes are right so this one I've got out of the bag now this is the recoil unit you can see that's beautifully made all molded resistors on the motor and the little um micro switch there so as the gun comes back it knows so this is the one that actually gives you the as it fires it just pulls the gun back this one is the elevation of the gun so that's the up and down of the actual 90 millimeter gun and then this one is the turret rotation. This one makes into the top of the hull and turns the turret. Here we go. Another exercise in how to <clears throat> beautifully package a model. Two bags of tyres. Tiny little mould seam on them. That'll soon wear off, I'm guessing. And then you've got your sprue in the middle, which you need to cut out as well. So we can see on there, 2002 Tamiya. So very old. Metal plate. More metal plates, and then we've got a white box here. Within this, that's quite heavy actually. There's a there's the metal chassis. So I'll get this out and have a look. So that's your metal chassis plate with an anti-corrosive coating on it, and that is steel. And um, that's where your motors are going to bolt to, and then this bolts into the bottom of the the plastic hull which we've actually got here. You can open the ends of the box up. Look at that, it's like a work of art. And there's our plastic hull. If 
for the bottom. Now I'm not I'm looking on here to see if it says anywhere what it's made of. I can't see anything. So I'm not sure if it's polystyrene or ABS, but we'll soon find out if we build it. So we've got the um, detail suspension units there. Obviously there's there's casting on the front of here which is very very nice. If I can get the light to pick that up. There's some lovely casting on there which is really nice. But nothing else anywhere else. It's only on the um, only on that panel there. But you could always add some casting if you, if you wanted to. You could uh, go to town with the detail on this. Have it as, as beautiful as you like, or just build it as a as a toy. But yeah, very very nice indeed. So let's get that all back together. We'll get the uh, the main plastic parts out. Okay, so here's our uh, here's our big main box with all our parts in. We can remove that piece of cardboard there and then we can get the top of the hull out of the box I think can we take some screws out first now we can get the hull out I'm not going to take stuff out of the bag guys and I'm sorry about the reflection off the light but um you know it is what it is so here we go we can see the uh, water filling point there with the cap it says water on there we've got our casting marks casting numbers on the hull Pressed steel fenders with the, the detail on there, handle detail which could easily be um, scraped around like I do to make it look more realistic. Lovely cast texture on the front of there, lovely cast texture everywhere actually on here. Yeah, very nice indeed, beautifully moulded. Not much to say about it really other than it's massive. And then we've got a sprue here with our, obviously we've got a commander figure there. And then, I don't know if I move this box away from behind, isn't it? We've got a commander figure there, you can see. And we've got some toolboxes there with the with the hinge detail on them. Hatch detail. Again, the handles could be highlighted. More toolbox detail. Hatches. We've got our fenders here that you probably choose not to use. We've got a pin tool by the look of it. Cable which is moulded in plastic which I do like to see, although I have got some Abra cables I could use if I wanted to. Um, and all sorts of bits of plastic grills and stuff with the hinge detail. One of the downsides to 16th scale is it's very easy to make stuff look toy-like. Um, but Tammy have done a great job here. There's the uh, commander's face you can see there which is... Um, very nice indeed. There are our main turret. Again, lovely cast texture. Get this light away a bit. Lovely cast texture on there. Again, with casting numbers on the back. Detail parts here. We've got the cupola. Cupola, whatever you want to call it. No clear glazing in there which is a bit strange for this scale. There's probably an aftermarket cupola you can buy with clear glazing in there. And then we've got all sorts of brackets and clamps and headlights and bits and pieces all around the tank on that sprue there. We've got some more grills, spare trap links. Here's our muzzle for the end of the barrel. And then we've got some tools towing brackets, you know, some lifting eyes and stuff which are all welded on and then same on the other side double sprue that one. Got three of these sprues this is our jerry cans, toolboxes, helmets so yeah very nice nicely molded turret rotation pieces and elevation pieces wheel sprues there's one two three four five of these you can see there the wheels are beautifully detailed with uh, bolt detail and everything on them turn rollers there again with lovely detail on them and then we've got suspension units here and then there's our mountings for the uh, for the return rollers and then our shock absorbers or buffers where they are here 
and then a sprue of as our magnet with the lovely cast texture on there and we've got some sort of mounting bracket for something to do with the magnet there and then we've got so three parts to the magnet turret ring there another part to the magnet there the mounting for the machine gun up there you can see and we've got the um this is the um loader's hatch isn't it and then there's part of the uh the gun clamp little clear sprue with our headlight lenses in with the correct detail on there and then our brake light rear light lenses there and then here finally we've got our 50 cal which is going on the top and then we've got the uh, the rear cooling jacket part there and then there's the main main gun barrel there which is very nicely molded the end is blank I have to drill that out but remember this is an 18 year old kit guys so kind of what you'd expect and then in here we have <clears throat> our aluminium or aluminum gun barrel if I can get it out there we are there's our aluminum gun barrel which is just a plain piece of turned aluminium obviously it's got a hollow end it will be hollow right through for the um, for the light to go through but so uh, yeah nice touch nice addition to the kit so that's it guys that is the Tamiya 1 16th US medium tank Pershing and uh, what a beautiful kit it is that's the first time I've been through that box I've had it years as I say and um, very very impressed with it so uh, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed that sorry about the light and reflection on the bags and everything guys but you know if I open every kit I own and review for you and get everything out of the bags they'll all become worthless because they're all open so um, you know if I decide to sell this it's better to sell it in an unopened state so thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you all soon with another build video Bye for now and happy modelling.